Hi, welcome to our Docker Security Mini Series. Today, we're going to be talking about how to build secure containers. My name is Diogo Monica, and I'm the security lead here at Docker. Before we go into nitty gritty details, let me give you some general tips on Docker files and Docker file security. The first thing you need to do is you need to consider how to verify the authenticity of any software you install in your images. In the case of using some official apt-get, for example, you can have and be sure that this has been taken care for you. However, if you are downloading files from the internet or installing software from a third-party repository, you should always verify these files are signed or have valid checksums. For example, if you are adding a file remotely, you should make sure that this URL is using HTTPS and not HTTP. If you're using a third-party repository, you should always include the right GPG keys before using your package manager to update these packages. You can even pin to specific hashes of a file to ensure that these remote files have not been maliciously modified. Another recommendation is on your from directive, you should always use a specific tag from Ubuntu 14.04, not just from Ubuntu. You should never run your applications as root. Just because you're using a Docker container doesn't mean that you can ignore 20 years of best practices of Linux security. In fact, you should always use the user directive inside of the Docker file to make sure that you drop privileges of your user. If your application has to start as root because it runs on a privileged port, remember, you can map arbitrary ports on your host inside of the container, so you don't actually need to run with the same port inside of the container as you do outside. If you do actually need to run as root, not because of the port, make sure that you draw privileges as quickly as possible. One recommendation on that is use gosu and not sudo. Now let me talk to you about minimal base images. What is a minimal base image? A minimal base image is a Docker image that has no cruft. It has the minimum essential things that you need to run your application successfully. There are several different minimal options. My favorite minimal image is Alpine. Alpine is only two megabytes of image compared with, for example, Ubuntu that is around 60 megabytes. There are obviously trade-offs between minimal images and bigger images, such as the availability of packages, but in general, you should always build the minimum image that you can to run your application. Remember, do not run SSH inside of your container. That is no reason why you should need it. And now I would like to run through a demo of us building our own Docker file that builds Nginx in an Alpine minimal image. The first thing we need to do to create our Nginx Alpine image is to create a Docker file. Instead of this Docker file, we're going to use the from primitive to provide what base image do we want for our Docker file. In our case, we're going to use the minimal base image Alpine with the 3.2 version. After that, we're going to run Alpine's package manager, and we're going to add the Nginx package. Also, we're going to make sure that we remove the cache in order not to create an extra layer. Now, we're going to finish our Docker file with our commands, which will be what Docker uses to run this image. We're going to make sure that we provide daemon off or else this won't work. And there we go. So now we have to add an index.html and an nginx configuration. If you leave the Docker file, you'll see that I provided index.html with a nice nginx running message and a very simple nginx configuration file out of the box. This listens on port 8080. So if we go back to our Docker file, we can add these files to our image by using the command copy. Let's add nginx.conf to add c.nginx slash nginx.conf. And let's add our index.html to user share nginx html index.html. And that's it. At this point, we have a nginx on top of the Alpine in a Docker file that should build. Let's try it out. Docker builds, call it nginx and let's run this. This should be incredibly fast because the Alpine base image is really small. We're actually gonna see that the final image with Nginx 
is going to be under seven megabytes. I can show you that by running Docker images and showing you that in fact, our image has 6.7 megabytes. That's great. So now let's run our Nginx. We can do that by doing Docker run. We're gonna bind the 80 port on the host to 8080 in the container, and we're gonna run Nginx. And if we go to our browser, we're gonna see that we now have an Nginx running inside of an Alpine Docker container. This is great. Unfortunately, our Docker file did not set a user, and so Nginx is running as root. I can show you that by running the same Nginx in daemon mode, and then we can actually execute a ps command inside of this running container to show you that even though the process worker is running as nginx user, the master process is running as root. Okay, we can do better than this. So let's kill our container by doing docker kill. We're no longer running. And let's edit our Docker file to add the user directive and say that Nginx should actually be running as nobody. Okay. Unfortunately, Nginx needs to be tweaked to be able to run as non-root. And so I provided another configuration file, Nginx non-root.config. The only differences to the other configuration file are the fact that we're setting the log error in the PID on temp, which is a directory that does not require root privileges to be written to. And we're setting an array of cache files that would otherwise be set to restricted locations that are only accessible by root. Okay, so if we added our Docker file to instead of using nginx-conf to use nginx non-root-conf, and we rebuild it, we should be able to see that this container is no longer running as root. And Nginx should in fact be running as nobody. Let's try it out. Docker run, dash D with a port. Container is running. Our website is still running. And if we do Docker PS, and we do Docker exec of this running container, with PS, you're going to see that in fact it is running as nobody. So here you go. This is an example of how from scratch you can create a Docker file that has Nginx on top of Alpine running as non root. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Make sure you go to docker.com/security if you want to learn more.